Hey all, Courtney Despis, Director of Education with Trout's Fly Fishing. And in this installment of Trout's Tips, we're gonna be doing a dry dropper rig. All right, as we move into our dry dropper rig, I actually already have a dry sitting here on my rig, but I'm gonna give you a little info since I'm not tying it on camera today. We have a seven and a half foot 4X liter off of my line. I put a larger dry on top. This is imperative based on what size fly you're actually planning on dropping off of your dry. Obviously the larger or heavier fly you're looking to drop, the larger fly, dry fly you need to have on top to support that weight underneath. In a dry dropper rig, your dry fly basically operates as a functional indicator. So this is gonna continue to float on top of the surface while your nymph hopefully has a nice drift subsurface. This can become two things then. You could have a fish potentially come up and eat it, or you can continue to monitor it throughout the drift for any movement, pauses, or change in drift to indicate that a fish is eating your nymph so that you can set on that fish. What I've done with this dry is I've clench knotted it right here through the eye of the fly and attached it. What we're gonna do next is we're gonna drop the dropper off of this dry. This is a fantastic rig to fish really from what can be spring all the way through late summer. Um, you hear a lot of people actually refer to this rig as a hopper dropper rig because a lot of times we'll use hoppers on the top because they're larger, bushier um, type dries. We can throw them close to the banks, drag that nymph and have a better chance or an increased chance of catching a trout. What I've done is I flip my pack around. I have my tippet here on my tippet ring. Um, because I have 4X going to my dry, I'm gonna go no larger than 4X off. I'm actually in this case gonna drop 5X off of here. I'm gonna start to pull my tippet off of my spool. I'm gonna go ahead and double it over my finger. I'm gonna wrap it around about five times, bring my tag in through my open loop. So I've started my clinch knot to make it easier on myself. I'm gonna go ahead and take the point of my hook, slide it through that opening to bring that doubled over or clinch knotted portion around the bend of the hook. I'm gonna lubricate and then I'm gonna set my knot. After I set my knot, as always, we're gonna to wanna to trim this tag back. Try not to leave these tags around on the ground. I always try to typically trim them over my bag so they fall back into my bag. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna pull out enough tippet to go to your dropper. I typically recommend anywhere from 18 to 24 inches. Some of this is gonna depend on the flows and the depths of the river you're fishing, what fly you're putting underneath, or if you're doing single or double droppers. Today, we're just gonna do a single. Once you cut your distance off, you're gonna go down to the tag end. It's gonna go through the eye of your dropper. In this case, we're doing a red bead ahead copper john. Double back on itself, wrap to move into your clinch knot. I'm gonna go five to six times since this is 5X. I'm gonna bring my tag end back through that tiny opening between the eye of my fly and the beginning of my wraps. I'm gonna hold that tag in against my fly, lubricate, and set my knot. Again, any excess tag that may be sticking out, I'm gonna go ahead and trim, trim it over my bag so the trash falls in there. Leave a slight amount of tag just in case my knot is not quite set entirely, so if a trout takes this, I don't lose the trout through a loose knot or a loss of a knot. And now, you can add floatant to your dry. Make sure to let it dry entirely prior to actually fishing it. And when all is said and done, you now have a dry dropper rig. We have our dry on top with our nymph trailing behind. When we go to cast this, again, this dry is gonna stay on top of the surface floating. Our nymph is gonna trail behind our dry subsurface based on the weight. And we're gonna go for a nice, long, dragless drift. Thanks for joining us for this installment of Trout's Tips. For additional parts of this series, visit our Trout's YouTube channel and don't forget to like and subscribe.